Um, I, I'm, as long as we keep having lightning talk spots to fill, I'm gonna keep thinking of things I wanna say to y'all. Um, um, and what I wanna say to you today is prompted by some of the conversations I've had earlier today and, and thinking about how we sort of internally choose to compare our, our two languages to other languages. And it, it seems to me, and I do this myself, that the sort of tempting and obvious thing to do when we're comparing Perl or Raku to another language is to compare it to uh, you know, very mainstream language, a JavaScript or Python. Um, and, and that of course makes sense, especially if we're talking to outside people, you know, if you want someone to understand the comparison you're making, it makes sense to pick the, the broader, uh, more widely known language to, as a point of comparison. Um, in the same way that like, if you have a local pizza place, you wanna compare it to Domino's to like tell people what, what's better about it. But the, the peril there, or, and the part that concerns me is if you have a local pizza place you don't want to think that because you're comparing yourself to Domino's, you should follow the same strategies as Domino's. You're, you're in a very different position than, than a huge national chain is. And it seems to me that we're both in very different positions than a language um, like Python or JavaScript, where uh, a huge part of the appeal is like, this is the default that everyone else is using. And it's just sort of the, the, that, that sort of choice from the convenience and, and all of that perspective. So what, what I'm thinking is that at least internally, we shouldn't really be thinking about, you know, Perl versus Python or uh, Raku versus JavaScript or et cetera for some of these more widespread languages. So what languages do I think we should be comparing ourselves to and, and thinking about as um, positioned in, in similar places as, as our two languages. I've been giving that some thought, and I, I think that there are a number of uh, languages that um, each of, our, uh, of us could compare ourselves to, and ones that actually make me very optimistic. So for Perl, um, languages that don't have super widespread adoption right now, but that have extremely loyal and wonderful programmers I'm thinking of like APL and Common Lisp, and for Raku languages that also have you know not a ton of programmers because they are very new. And uh, I'm thinking of languages like Zig or Nim. And if I think of those as our you know pure languages that we compare ourselves to, that makes me really excited because I think that is very good company to be in. Um, some of the the absolute smartest. Uh, programmers, people who I, at, at a technical level, just admire and think the world of are, are APL programmers. Um, and, and that's just one, one of those communities that I happen to know a little bit better. And, um, but, so, so that makes me excited if that is the right comparison for us to be making. But it also makes me wonder what, what could we learn from that comparison? And my thought is that what we could learn from that is that um, it is to think about why do people program in languages like APL, like Common Lisp, like Zig, like Nim. It's not because they're the default safe choice the way um, a language that 70% you know, of people are saying on a Stack Overflow survey they use. It's because if you're the right sort of programmer, a language like APL can really give you superpowers. You know, there are people who just APL and the array oriented nature of it just fits their brain just right. Um, and that lets them do things in a week that would take some other programmer a month or six months. Or, and it lets tiny companies uh, come out with products that would normally take a huge team. And, and there is something about that language that has meant that it still has a small but extremely vibrant and loyal community that has stuck around from a language that was first came out in, in 1966. And, and I think that Perl and Raku are also languages that people 
are drawn to because they give us superpowers. I think that the, the type of brain that works for Perl and Raku is a bit different. Our languages are very linguistically expressive and are able to capture something, you know, it's not the, the array oriented nature of, of APL, but it is a different set of superpowers. And I, I firmly believe that for both of these languages, they're also ones that people can be very excited about and very drawn to because of that that superpower nature of it, that by being a Perl shop, by being by doing something in Raku, you can have a small team that punches way above its weight and that goes up against some of the like tech giant behemoths and and um, accomplishes things that a team that size would never be able to do with a language that didn't fit their brain in, in quite the the weird way that that Perl and, and Raku can for many of us in, in this room. Um, and I don't know, that's, that's just what I've been thinking anyway. I, I don't know if you all agree or not, but I, I think that that positioning of what, what can we, how can we articulate that value? How can we tell people not, you know, do this instead of Python, but do this because it gives you superpowers in the same way that these other, uh, languages with extremely passionate communities, but much smaller communities have. And, and is that something that we as a community can do more with? So it's what I've been thinking about. Now maybe some of you are thinking about it too. Thanks. Yay.